One big advantage you have in the jungle is the you know, vast variety of leaves and you know, they have many uses. This is pass, um, you know, which I've shown you before you can use for uh, you know, making a cut. Um, but you know, there, there are other things we can use it for. Uh, you know, one of which is um, you know, you can, if you need a hat, you just, you've forgotten your bandana. You can very quickly fashion one out of this. You just roll them together like so. Fit it to your head. Get a bit of cordage. Uh, you know, and um, you know you've got a hat. Now the more complicated, you know, more elegant ways of doing, you know, weaving palm fronds, uh, you know, into hats. But you know they take a bit of time. Whereas this, you know, really doesn't take any time at all. And that's kind of what I wanted to, to show you in, in this video, is just some basic weaving techniques. Nothing fancy, but just the stuff, you know, you kind of need to know, uh, you know, to make things like, you know, if you want a, a container, um, you know, or a, uh, to make a mat or to, or to make a roof. And that's probably the most important one. Okay, so here I've got some, uh, I, mean, I think this is red palm. And, you know, some palms are preferred to others and it you know the, the difference is how the leaves uh, behave when they dry some sort of shrivel up which isn't much good you know if you're making um if you're making a shelter but this stuff's quite good and the other one that's that's used a lot is is burtan so you know as always with things in the jungle you know there are spikes in these things you just want to get rid of those i'm just going to collect a few not many and uh you'll know, we'll take them back so I've got about five fronds here, but now I need to, I've got a bit of a trek out of the jungle here and I need to, you know, this is a bit bulky and also I don't want these leaves to get damaged, you know, as, as, I, as I trek out of the jungle. So I'm just going to uh, sort of, do, I'm doing like overhand turns of the leaves up the stems, you know, to keep it all together. Okay, and towards the end, I'm just going to put uh, an overhand knot, grab a bunch. And there we go. And that, you know, is much easier for me to, uh, you know, to carry through the jungle. Weaving the palm fronds to make roof slats is pretty straightforward. The trick, if you like, or the skill is how quickly you can do it because you need so many of them. Now, there are two methods of doing it. One is I can weave this side and, I, and weave that side separately and split the frond in half and I end up with two slats. And the way you do that is we're gonna start on the third from the left I'm just going to go over and under, like so. Then I'm going to ignore this one, take the, the, the next one, go over that, under, over, like so. And then I'm going to ignore this one, take that one, go over, under, over, under. But you can see I'm getting quite a, a sort of loose weave on this. I mean, I can tighten it all up, uh, but this, this would work better on very big... Uh, palm fronds but with something like this I do it a different way which I think works better which is I'm going to take leaves from this side and bend them over so I'm going to come over there and under there like that and what this is going to do um, is give me a much uh, denser packed weave than, than the other method so I'm going over, under, over, under like so Let's push those down, take the next one, go over, under, over, under, over, right, like so. And that way we can, we can build up the weave, uh, you know, more densely. And what, the beginning's always a bit tricky, but once you get going, what you're trying to do, um, let's see where's I'm going. The ones I want it to go under, I'm just going to pick up that leaf, see what I'm doing here, just picking up the leaves I want it to go under, uh, you know, and that way, you know, it, it's, it's quite quick. And as you're doing it, you're going to be tightening it up, like so. I'm just going to be pulling them. So I'm pulling these to the left, I'm pulling these to the right, and that gives me this nice, dense weave here. So let me quickly do that, and then I'll show you a couple of other techniques that you, you, know, you need to know just to sort of finish it all off. As I say, you just lift up the ones you want it to go under. Like so. Okay, that's my basic weave finish, but I've got all these like straggly bits at this end and I've got 
straggly bits at the other end that I need to um, tidy up. Now the problem is I've run out of leaves from this side to go over that, that way, but I've still got these leaves left. So these, um, you know, this outer one, I, you know, we can just weave that in by bending it over. Like so, and we can just, uh, you know, weave that one in as well. Do that quickly. And this one, again, I can bend it. I'm going to have to bend it under that one, like so. And now I can weave that one in as well. And this just gives it gives you, you it makes the slat a bit tidier, but it also makes it a bit bigger because I'm getting this area as you know as well. Same here, I'm just going to bend this one under, like so, like so, like so. So I'm going to do do that. Um, well, let's just finish this off quickly. Um, Okay, last one. Right. Let's crunch those down. Now, the other thing we can do here is to lock it in place because there's a danger of this, you know, coming out like that. And the way to do that is we're just going to take one of these, bend it over, and bring it back into the weave. I'm going to take it under this bit here. I'm just going to lift that up slightly. And that's just going to you know, lock the weave in place. Similarly, this one, I can bend it over, feed it in there, and just slide them in, like so. And that locks it up and gives you, you know, a nice clean um, edge to your roof slat. And, you know, you just do exactly the same, you know, at this side. Okay, and that is our completed roof slat. So this is the roof I'm doing for, you know, the temple fire that we did in the last video. A few things to know about, um, you know, building a roof like this. Number one, you know, whenever you're doing a natural shelter, you want a very steep angle. You know, that's the advantage of having this thing on sheer lashing. If the rain is very heavy, I can have it down like this and the water will run off. You know, that's something to bear in mind. Other things, they, this top palm from here, that's one of the red palms I brought out of the jungle. And, you know, you can... Uh, few things you can see, it's been out here for a couple of days and it's dry. As it's dried, the leaves have shrunk a bit, so you know, the gaps have got bigger. And you know, th that's the thing, when you're using these palm fronds, you're layering them like this, you want them every hand width coming down. So, you know, I brought out five palm fronds, but you can see I probably need about maybe 15 or so, you know, of these type of palm fronds. Other things to note, um, you know, the, the general rule is, you know, these have got to be on top, then that one's below, then below, 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 below. And people try and build it from the bottom up, but that's quite difficult to do because the way this is attached is I'm tying it here, and I've got a string, I'll show you in a minute, behind, and I just do an overhand knot at each of the, uh, you know, the palm fronds. But I can actually start at the top, and then I can just lift this up, and then I've got my second one. You know, when I want to put my third one in, I just lift that one up. So you don't need to start at the bottom, but you know, obviously you do want you know, it layered with the top one outermost. So I'm just going to add this one uh, we've just done. So I'm just going to lift up, you know, the, the fronds and just stick it into place like that. And then I'm going to tie it on at the back. Okay, so here are my palm fronds from the back. You can see I'm tying them on, you know, with just an overhand knot there. This is the last slat that we're adding. So I'm just going to loop it through there. It's very easy. And do an overhand knot and that's it. Okay, let's see how it works in the rain. Fire going down there. It's nice and dry inside. Some other uses for these palm leaves, uh, you can make a cup, I've covered this before, this is a small leaf, so it's a small cup, but you know, you can boil water in that, 
uh, you know, or use it as a scoop or whatever, easy to do, check the early video to see how it's done. Um, these leaves are great for making flights on arrows. This is a bamboo uh, arrow. I just split it in four at the top and you just slide the leaves in. So, you know, it takes seconds. You can also, you know, make cordage, um, you know, just by wrapping it. I'm just putting in the, the third wrap here. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's not particularly strong. I mean, you know, these are, it's made from leaves, but it's good enough for, you know, lashings or whatever, you know, well, for lashings, basically. That's what I would use it for. Um, but, you know, usually there are better, there's better cordage out there in the jungle. Another use for these palm leaves is we can, um, you know, use the individual leaves. For example, you can use, you can do thatching. So if that was your sort of roof strut, we're just going to fold that over like that, tie, tie it here, and then add a next one, tie it, you know, looping it. And you form very nice thatching, but it takes a lot of time, uh, you know, and you need a lot of, um, you need a lot of palm leaves. The, the other thing we can use palm leaves for is making mats. And you can do that in the same way we did the, the roof slats. Um, but you're kind of limited, the size of it is limited by the size of the palm fond. Um, the other way you can do it is using a square weave. And, um, you know, here, I mean, you wouldn't really use these leaves. You'd use leaves from like pandan or you could use, um, you know, stems from, um, what do you call it, Bertam, the Bertam palm stem itself. You can cut that into like long, um, you know, sort of slices and use that. But basically, I mean, it's very straightforward. You know, you, I mean, this is how I do it. You want to start with one, you know, one corner, uh, you know, and then just square weave it in. I mean, it's, <laughs> what I do is that the first, the first ones I sort of double them. Uh, well, like, like that, like that, like that, like that. And once you've, once you've got the, the sort of pattern started, you know, it's fairly straightforward and you can add in you know, more, um, you know, more leaves as, as you go along. So that's going to under, uh, just start this corner. Oops, where have I gone? Right. So that's kind of the start of the weave. And if you sort of pull that all tight, you know, like so, you know, it kind of locks it. Sorry, it kind of locks in place, and now we can, you know, just add more. You know, either way. What I do is I just um, fold it over, like so. Um, and that one is go under, over, under, over, and so on. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's 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 pretty intuitive. But that way, you know, you're not limited in terms of how big the mat can become as you are if you do that sort of diagonal weave with the palm fronds themselves. Okay, so here you can see the pattern, you know, building up. You know, these leaves are too, I mean, aren't really right for this because they're, they're not long enough. Pandan leaves are about six foot long, so it makes life much easier. But you know, I can always add in more leaves. So here, this one's got too, too short. I can just, um, you know, thread another leaf, you know, into the weave. Uh, yeah, that's, that's no problem. So, as I say, you know, you can just keep going, keep building it up, and you make, you know, a nice mat at the, at, you know, the end, just quite comfortable. And then, you know, as before, you know, we can lock the, the ends, you know, once, once we've got the mat the size we want, we're just going to fold over the loose ends, uh, you know, and push them back into the weave like this, you know, and that's going to lock everything in place, um, you know, and, and uh, yeah, hold, hold it the way you want it to. Something else we can make quite easily is, uh, you know, a basket like this. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll tie this off. We can cut those off, and you know, that that's our sort of basket. Um, but let me try to show you how this all gets put together. First, so what you're doing here is you, you take. Um, you know, a piece of palm like that, a piece of the palm from, and then I'm taking these leaves and weaving them up the spine first. So that's the first stage. So we're going up the spine, you know, like so. And we're doing that on either side so that we've got, um, you know, these, these four strands here going 
up along the spine of the, um, the, the palm frond. Now I'm going to cross those over and just weave these together. That, this is going to form the, the very base of the basket. Otherwise, you know, you get like a bit of a hole and things fall out. So I got to there, now I'm going to fold under. Fold that one under and then over under and then over under. Right, so. Right, now the next stage is we want to get that out of the way because it makes, otherwise it makes the weaving a little bit difficult. So I'm just going to bring it up here and for the moment I'm just going to loosely, you know, tie with an overhand knot. Just, just gets it out of the way. And now we want to form the actual shape of the basket. And I'm going to take these two first leaves and we're going to be weaving towards us now. So I'm going to cross them like so. And then uh, we'll take the next leaf. So that, that has to go, that's going over. So um, it's going over that one, so it goes under that one. So it goes like that. And then we take the leaf from the other side and going over, under, like so. And yeah, you know, we're just gonna we're just gonna continue doing this, and it will naturally form into the shape of, you know, a, a basket, which is what we want. Uh, so that needs to go over, under, over, under. Just try and keep the weave reasonably tight. And yeah, you know, this is what I say one of those times when you know you could do with an extra pair of hands, really. But you can just, you know, sort of loosely hold it together as you're doing it. The first bit's always the most difficult weaving. Over, under, over, under, over. Oh, I'm not doing this very well because I'm just trying to show you how it's done. Um, that's under, over, under, over, under. Right, so that's our first lot done. It's got to come out, never mind. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull these around to the side of it. Uh, let's see if I'll just hold together for a second. I'm tie these out of the way. these loose ends, I'm going to take them and weave them into the pattern as well, so that they end up behind the basket. So this one, I'm going to twist it over, under, over, and this one, I'm going to twist it back on itself, and under that one, and that one we can just put it out of the way. And these, I mean this isn't the neatest, most elegant way of doing it, but I'm just going to tie it behind later on. And similarly with this, that needs to go over that one. All right, on. All right. No, under that one. Over, under. I say, I, I mean, I could do this more neatly, but uh, I just really want to show you the principle. And you know, what we want here is just a quick basket. I'm not, you know, going to enter into any sort of country fair with this. I just want a container. <laughs> so I don't really care too much what it looks like, as long as it you know, whole stuff, that, that's good enough for me. And then we'll pull that one round, and then we can tie these, you know, the simplest way, you know, would be then to just tie these together at the back, like that. Um, we can re release that, which is our sort of base bit there, stuff that inside, you cut them off. But you know, that's your sort of basic, uh, you know, basket shape, but done very quickly and <laughs> I admit very crudely.